Hey guys, number one Marmaduke fan here. I'm looking at uh, In Real Life, IRL, written by uh, Corey Doctorow, a games <coughs> journalist. <coughs> Fake news. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, a, a games journalist. And uh, art by Jen Wang. And I would recommend this purely for the beautiful art by Jen Wang. I love it. It's very expressive, cartoony style. It fits the tone of the story well. I like that there's a contrast between the game world, where the game world is bright and colorful, and uh, I think her name's Anda, but the the real world is a lot more, you know, earthy and a little bit more boring. Anda, yeah. I also like how Anda is like a little chubby in real life, and then when she kind of role plays as the character, she role plays a more slender, like badass girl. I don't know. There's just something very human about that, and uh, Wang's art is definitely like the selling point on this book. I grabbed this because. I read this years ago when it first came out, 2014. Either Gamergate had already happened or Gamergate was about to happen. And I kind of remember having this sense that something like Gamergate was coming because you could you could just kind of tell from all the little debates and all the little you know clickbait pieces that were being published that something was going to happen before you know the big explosion of it happened. And I had mostly quit gaming. Uh, I had I was focusing at my on my studies at the time. But I always, like, loved games and considered that, like, a part of my, you know, like, it, it was part of what made me me, was that I was good at video games, and I was proud of that, right? So when the culture war came to gaming, I was really interested in that topic. Now, the kind of, like, out, one of the things that I like about this is actually, this is one of the things that got me thinking about video game video games as a storytelling vehicle, and even kind of, like, down to, like, kind of, like, the gamer is a bit of a loser, a bit of a social outcast, where it, it it's an isolated activity and it's an isolated activity that te teaches you things that are similar to sports like commitment practice uh getting good you don't like pat someone on the head and give them a participation trophy you're either good at the game or you're not good at the game so uh and i i remember really liking the art but even like six years ago i remember reading this and thinking this is like an after school special this is uh hey kids let's learn about current events and community organizing and uh we're gonna pretend it's a story so uh maximum shade on uh cory doctorow uh <laughs> google fake news fake news <laughs> excuse me but uh definitely good props for uh wang's art so <laughs> since we've like thrown maximum shade at our poor boy cory doctor let me say that he uh he I think spoils what is actually a pretty good story. Like there was a really good story within in real life, but I think he spoiled it with like his, I don't know, his attitude of storytelling as social activism or something. So his introduction is ga gaming and economics. And I thought, oh, wow, I like games. I like economics. And it's like, oh, uh, uh, material labor theory, uh, uh, social activism in the internet, the Occupy Wall Street movement is such a hopeful Signal of the future. Oh, you mean that movement where guys were running around sexually assaulting people and smelling ladies' feet? That, that's what you want to cite as your positive example? Oh, well, how about the Tea Party? Are they a positive example? <laughs> agree. So much fake news. All right, so I just kind of wish this whole essay was ripped out of it because that's basically like, uh, hey, kids, this is homework. We're going to teach you about social studies and current, current events. Just get into your story. So the story itself is actually kind of interesting. We've got this girl, Anda. She uh, is a little bit... Like she, she's a little dumpy. She doesn't have much confidence. And so online gaming becomes this cool thing for her, right? Where she meets people. Now there is this really cringy thing where like a lady with the sh side of her head shaved, who's supposed to be the cool, awesome gamer girl because you know, middle-aged male feminists, they know, they know so much about cool, awesome gamer girls. <laughs> hey girls, you know what you should do to feel like an awesome girl power girl? You should join a club that's got segregation and only allows women in and that club should only let you play as female characters because there's something like patriarchal about girls not playing as girls on the internet we should when we tell you what kind of character you should play as that's girl pound great so that is really it's really obnoxious like it's literally gender discrimination it's literally telling the girls exactly how they should be playing i i just don't believe that girls think i am not going to play as a girl character on World of Warcraft. You know, there, actually there might be, the, the thing is, okay, this book is obviously social justice influence, right? And that's kind of been like the albatross or the elephant in the room of this entire channel where uh, I made videos about social justice in the first part of my channel, but I kind of hate 
anti-SJW YouTube. But the thing about it is social justice is so omnipresent. It's kind of hard to avoid talking about it. And kind of one of the conclusions I came to is it's not enough to just complain about SJWs. You have to you have to talk to them like they're people. So, uh, dis despite his immersion in fake news, Cory Doctorow talks about some actually meaningful things in this. He talks about how China sucks and communist China definitely sucks. Uh, you, uh, you, Cory Doctorow and Donald Trump agree that we got to do something about China. But so she starts playing the game and she meets a Chinese kid who's basically being forced to work ridiculous like twelve hour days farming for gold j just to make ends meet. And there's this sweet undertone where she doesn't get it at first. She just assumes that, well, I guess uh, if he protests to his boss, then his boss will have to listen to him. And the kid instantly gets fired, of course, and she feels guilty about this. She didn't know that much about Chinese culture. She didn't know that much about the world around her. She just assumed that if he did what Americans do, everything would work out. And she kind of has to like co cope with this. Uh, she makes a friendship with another badass gamer girl who is like hunting down gold farmers for money. So there's this kind of like, like nice little ethical thing where, uh, you know, she kind of grapples with the ethics of this. Is it good to hunt down these gold farmers and stop them from exploiting the game? Is it good that I'm going behind my parent parents' back? She kind of learns responsibility as she goes. Her parents kind of learn to understand her hobby. So really there was a lot of like little bits and pieces of this that I gra grabbed for, from for my own writing honestly, and I just love, I just love Wang's art <laughs> so much. It's it's so sweet and simple. Yeah, so despite, like, the kind of, I think, really cringy, really condescending, uh, like, gamer girl a aspect to it, the, the art to me sold me, and there was a, a good story in here, and really, it, it, it makes a good point. Like, like, you don't understand what it's like to live in China under communist uh, oppression. You can't just, like, assume that your worldview or your experiences will apply, work for everybody in every situation all around the world. And so maturity is kind of like l learning and growing. And then there's kind of a sweet thing at the end where he shows up in another avatar. He's uh, kind of made things work out. He's kind of like her Prince Charming. So that, that was really sweet. Uh, it's, I don't know. It, it, what, what could be done better? Because I, I, I love it when you bag on communist China. I, I feel like the problem is Social justice activists, the, the justice part of social justice, I like. Justice is good. And a social justice activist can fight for a thing that is actually just. It is unjust that people who live in communist China have these horrible working con conditions, right? Remember when the left used to complain about that and it wasn't just Donald Trump? But uh, then when you have like a framework or a worldview that tells you to act in a certain way or interpret the world in a certain way. It's sort of like you lose your ability to understand what justice is because you're isolating yourself from the truth. If if Gamergate is just a bunch of awful, sexist, misogynist uh, male dude bros, you don't have to listen to them when some of them might not be these horrible, sex sexist, misogynist dude bros. Some of them might be making like really legitimate points about uh, ethics in games journalism or... Uh, whether it's appropriate for games journalists not to disclose like cer certain details about who they're sleeping with when they're reviewing games, right? Uh, like those are valid criticisms. Uh, maybe, I think there's, there's a valid criticism that there are guys who gatekeep, who keep, make girls feel uncomfortable, make girls feel like they can't play with them. But that's a sort of so, that's a social fault in some young men who are kind of nerdy and very obsessive. You don't fix that by calling them sexist and uh, like shunning them and kicking them off of the internet. You fix something like that by social relationships, by having, by interacting with people socially and getting them to talk with people outside of their social circle. And one, one of the things that's worried me about social media is how quickly it's become like a place to create just an echo chamber, just people who agree with you, just people who think like you. So uh, I, I do feel like Cory Doctorow's uh, like social justice, hey kids, let's go get to community organizing. It's the Obama era, and Democrat and Republicans will never win a presidential election again. <laughs> that mentality kind of spoils it a little bit. At the same time, there is a very sweet uh, and uh, very fa uh, fascinating undertone to it that I really dig. So it was kind of like a little prompt for me to start thinking about uh, girls playing video games as a uh, like storytelling idea or a kind of like a, wor 
a world to set something in. I even like the visual contrast. I'd check it out. Yeah, I'd check it out. Uh, so, sorry about the fake new, news, Dr. Al, but uh, Wang, I don't know. I, you know what? I don't care if Wang is a fake news lady or not. Your art is beautiful. I love it. Everyone should check out, uh, let's get her na full name, Julie Wang, Jen Wang, Jen Wang's art. It's gorgeous. That's the selling point for this book. So thanks for, okay, this is one of the panels I didn't like where she's sort of like, she's like, she's 300 pounds there. She's 200 pounds there. You know what? I, doesn't bug me. I'm so happy with the overall effect. I'm number one Marmaduke fan. Enough OCD quibbling. Love you guys. Catch you later.